Hello and welcome to The Big Five. Ten things you'd like to change about the internet. Well, it could be five, it could be twenty, but that's the way most websites do get your attention, isn't it? Let's face it, the internet is something that is fast for most of us, becoming one of the major, one of the most dominating aspects and factors in our life. From how we are talking to people, to how we are communicating, to how we are getting our content, to... Uh, security around us, how the Internet of Things is coming. It's a dominant, dominant feature in our lives. But then there are lots of questions that people have about it, some concerns, whether it's bullying, whether it's security, whether it's privacy, whether there's something ghastly behind all of this which is going to come out and bite us at some point. So let's try and deconstruct all of that. Is there something we should be scared about when it comes to the Internet? Are there things that we should change? Are there things that the government should be trying to worry about or should the government stay out of it completely? We've assembled six people with some of the best insights into the Internet and how it actually functions to help us uh, understand the net a little better. Uh, and let me start off by welcoming Pranesh Prakash, who is Policy Director, the Centre for Internet and Society. Um, we have Saket Modi with us, who is an entrepreneurial and an ethical hacker who looks at security. Sometimes we'll be hacking a lot of your transactions to make sure that they're being done correctly. So if you have any questions, send them to Okay, I'm, I'm misinterpreting your job profile. but then That's very accurate. Oh, it is accurate. It is. Okay. <laughs> there you are. So Aparna Vishwanathan is, is an advocate uh, who's done a lot of work in cyber laws and other things. Um, Avinandan Sekri, co-founder newslaundry.com, actually loves the internet but d doesn't like it for what it's doing to your life, right? You spend no, too much it. time online. Uh, no, not that much actually. But well, I love what it's, it's gone down. <laughs> you keep on cribbing about the fact that it's eating my life. Do I? Well, you used to. <laughs> Only a few months ago that you changed. See, this is what it does. Now it's even eating into your memory span. All right, fine. Rajesh, Rajesh Charya, president of the Internet Service Providers Association. Uh, whether the government should look at this at all or not, I'm sure you have strong views on. And Anna Vetika, it's always great to have you with us as, as well. Um, well known author. All right, who wants to kick off? Um, is there something we should try to change about the internet? Absolutely. Uh, you the should change things about it. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, right now, the way uh, the internet functions uh, privileges uh, freedom of speech over privacy. So we ought to uh, work in ways that the internet can actually protect privacy. Uh, we live in a world of uh, oversharing where uh, it's not the fact that we're sharing so much that's, so much that's really the problem, but that corporations, that governments across the world actually harvest what we're sharing and make profiles about us. And, and that's one aspect of the internet that really deserves Okay, change. so government snooping on you, corporations snooping on you, I get that. But a flip side to that could be, why are you sharing so much? Every time you're looking at the internet and you're seeing people posting pictures of themselves, pictures which should never go out into the public domain. And I'm not just talking about the bad pictures, I'm talking about other pictures. You know, why would you want to be posing in that particular outfit and saying, am I looking fine? Why would you want to do something like that? But you've shared that and if, because you've shared that, why, why are you blaming other people from picking on it? I guess that's one view, of, one of the ways of looking at it. That would be perfectly fine. If there was an expectation that what I'm sharing is not actually sharing to us you know, a limited set of people who are following me or a okay. limited set of people who I'm uh, targeting. Now, most people, while they're sharing, they're thinking they're having that kind of a uh, you know, conversation. So say if you're at a bar, well, the conversation is open for anyone to hear, but you don't have the expectation that everyone is actually listening in and overhearing what you're saying. Okay. And that so, causes the problem. Okay, Barapran, before I come to you, Potentially, could some of that data that you are sharing, thinking only my friends are going to see it, or only my well, Twitter followers, you should be expecting anybody in the world really to see it. But on Facebook, for example, you're sharing something, you think only my friends are going to be seeing this. And before you know it, it's been disseminated to a much wider audience that you weren't thinking of. And there are no real laws to prevent that from happening. The uh, notoriously complex nature of a lot of these confidentiality agreements or what you're required to read. And therefore, people by and large just click on I agree without going it into detail. So that can be considered from a legal point of view. Look, it's, this is an onerous contract. It's one-sided and therefore it could be voidable. Though, I mean, I'm sure that people who have drafted it have taken a lot of protections to, to avoid that. But yes, that is one argument. But I think so, what so is... So just on that point, you think some of these agreements should be read carefully? This license continues even if you stop using our services. 
uh, you know, s stuff like that. Uh, Whose agreement is that? If we can, well, I'm not <laughs> going to name the corporations, go and look at all of them. There's, we are constantly changing and improving our services. We may suspend and stop a service altogether. Uh, it, there can be changes made in this and you have to come back and log on and see this. You should look at the terms regularly. We'll post notice of modifications <laughs> to these terms on this page. That page could change completely. It could say, we are going to sell your entire, all this data that you're putting on us. But if you haven't logged on to that page and read it again, it could go. Yeah, I mean, it's one-sided and complicated to begin with. Presumably, they can also unilaterally change it. But what's even more worrying, it's not just what I may post online or what I have agreed to, um, but it's also every time you use the Internet to search anything. I mean, you could be looking, I mean, what is the greatest thing about the Internet is you, you have a, a quest for knowledge. You search the Internet for any particular topic you want to read about, or you send an email. You are still being tracked through those acts. So I don't need to post my picture online in order to be tracked on the Internet. That is what is what I to so me you are is being the most tracked, you're saying and Definitely, everybody's being tracked on but the internet. If you if you don't want to be, there are options available that you won't be. So you can have a plugin on your browser, and you will not be tracked. So that option exists. So I don't see why the internet is to blame or should okay. change. Okay, as he says, op open everything on an igno incognito you know window, and you're good to go. There's no issue, or is there? Okay, just for starters, incognito doesn't stop yeah. tracking. That is just to uh, allow you an easier access to porn, <laughs> or basically deletes your sorry, deletes sorry, deletes, deletes your cookies. Yeah, that's how <laughs> that's how it's used most widely. That was the that was a survey recently. Uh, this reminds me, you know, this topic that we were talking about privacy on the internet, and you know, the thing that you re read out. Uh, this reminds me of this very popular saying. It says that you know, at, at a time when you step out of your house, if you cannot clean the entire world, you put on your shoes. Right. Ideally, the world should have been clean. You don't need shoes to go out. Right. It should be, you know, completely sparkling white. But the problem is it is not uh, feasibly possible or, you know, to have everything clean. So you make sure that you're taking precautions in order to make sure that even if there is dust on the ground, it doesn't stick to your soul. Similarly, on the Internet. Now, it is so vast. You're talking about what? like 3 billion people on the internet you're talking about 100 billion emails every day so that's like a lot of information being you know transferred on the in internet so instead of going out and reading the documents me as an end user because of course i use the internet all of us do uh, i would rather focus on me doing anything on the internet assuming that i'm being watched even if I'm on a Tor browser, which is relatively a better or a safer way to be because, you know, it bounces your IP addresses between multiple servers and it's relatively more difficult to track you. I say relatively not impossible to track you, but, but, but coming back, you know, it, it is still me assuming that everything is hacked and I'm being monitored on the Internet is the safest that's really, way of being. Is it, that's not, okay, how, can I just start coming to the audience in this? How many of you are on the Internet assuming that you're being watched? Whoa. <laughs> Everyone. My God. Now I know. This is a, obviously this is a, there are generational differences out there. How many people use the Tor browser? How many of people use the Tor browser? Okay. All of you, come and meet me after this to tell me why you're using it. <laughs> this, this is also going out on the internet. Now you know them. You have the addresses, their phone numbers. Go catch them, interrogate them. All right. I'm kidding. You're not are you using Tor browsers? Well, I don't, but I'm aware of them. So if so someone correct answer to that would have been, but Vikram, I do nothing that I did. <laughs> I, 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 I was I, waiting I, for you I, to you say know, that. So I'm only website. publishing extracts of the Bhagavad Gita, which is perfectly fine. You know, yeah, because I'm, I'm only going to places where, you know, uh, you enrich your life and Sri Sri Ravi Shankar teaches Yeah, I know, you, you know, come to the NDTV.com site very often. Yeah. Are you worried about, and, and, and tell us, I mean, oh, minimize because it, you are, after all, the president of the Internet Service Providers Association, are the Internet Service Providers, for starters, spying on all of us? Are there records somewhere there? First of all, giant yeah. banks of data no, seeing no, no. exactly where that particular gentleman, what he was surfing yesterday, and so on and so forth. No, yes. first of all, he's going to come back and buy no, the First of all, the service providers are not doing any banking of the data of any personal or any sort of thing. But one thing, what we are discussing about the privacy, when we are into the public internet, when we are sending ourselves to the public, then how far we are concerned about the privacy? Because all around us, the public is there. Yes. Yes and no. Uh, uh, there are times, yes, as I said, if you're posting something on Twitter, you should assume people are watching it. You could be sending a direct message to somebody. You could be having a direct email communication with somebody. You don't, you're not necessarily expecting that to be hacked, hacked yeah. and put out into 
public Vikram, domain. Vikram, it's not about the hacking. I am sending a mail to you. I am sending a picture to you. How I can guarantee that you are not forwarding this to your friend group? That's correct. Then but automatically I am being public. No, no. Then, no, but, no, but, 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 if I am sending a mail, no, if I am posting no, I mean, a picture. It's partly an issue. I mean, he's, <laughs> if you are if you're sending a mail to somebody, should you assume that that mail could be forwarded to a 30 people? Wow, well, you never know what the recipient is going to do with the mail, but that happens even often. It happens yeah, in the real correct. world. You send a letter to someone, they can go and publish it tomorrow. But that's, that's not Sorry, what's interesting that's a, about that's, the that's internet. A, the, the point no, is the internet. All of this is logged. So uh, now I, I'm, I'm kind of unclear what Rajesh is saying that ISPs don't maintain these logs because the law requires the ISP license that they're under requires. That's, that's the IPDR. We are maintaining the IP records. We are not maintaining the, the sites content. where you are going. So the IP We are not going for the deep packet inspection of the uh, content. We are just recording that you, you have logged in. This was your IP address. And from this time to this time, you have logged in. That's all. Further, we are not, not going. seeing which sites a person went no. to. So if the security uh, people come to you and say, was this person on whatever, a, a jihadi website? It will be, how, how uh, Vikram, it, it will be the, because what will happen? This will come from the content. The content site owner will say ki that this IP address has watched us or this IP address has accessed our website. Then we will be saying ki this IP address was being used by you. We know that in India, ISPs block websites, right? How could they block specific websites if they don't know what websites you're visiting? So they obviously... No, no, we are, we are blocking it from the DNS and we are blocking it from the... Proper but he's saying you can't tell, he can't tell that X person or he can't tell that X person or Y person actually went, went onto a particular website. That's we are not policing anything. No, Anna, let me get you in and then I want to come back to what role the government should be playing in all of this, if any. Because I want to address the issue of privacy. I think that there is a great need to educate people who are using the internet. It might sound boring, but I think we need to be having discussions in schools and colleges because this is, when you're on the internet, it is not a private conversation. You said just now that if I send a Twitter DM, then, some, then you might have a reasonable expectation of privacy. But if you tweet something out to your followers, you cannot be expecting that that's private. But we have instances, and I remember a conversation Amitabh Bachchan was having with a journalist which later got quoted by the press and he said but I was having a private one-on-one -on -one conversation with the journalist but it was on his public timeline and you get to realize then that there are many people who do not realize what they are getting into now what is the definition of privacy if you send an email to your mother or your sister there is a there is an expectation of privacy but if or you an SMS, put out which is you, again you may yes yeah. But if you put out a photograph, of a naked photograph of your baby on Facebook uh, and you have a thousand quote-unquote friends, how can you have a reasonable expectation of privacy? So one thing the, the internet makes you realize is, sorry to be undiplomatic, but there are a lot of foolish people out there. And therefore, we need to educate people to understand that you cannot be assuming that something that you have put out in a public space right. has then to be treated as private matter by people who are strangers to okay. you. So let's just stick for a moment to foolish behavior on the internet, right? And then we'll come to somebody actually getting nasty about it. Is there a lot of foolish behavior on the internet? Uh, there's a lot of foolish way Top behavior. Three foolish things that you see. <laughs> Thanks to... <laughs> Thanks to Donald Trump, we can say there's a lot of foolish people in the world right now. So that, uh, <laughs> but coming we'll back, coming back to the debate, the coming back to the debate. States, and I, it frightens me every time I say that. <laughs> I can be straightforward. So, uh, so, so the point, you know, I want to just add to what she just said, and that is so right. And I'll add that to the context of the debate that both of you were having in terms of the ISP storing or not storing the logs. The awareness, generally is so low. Uh, you know, out of the audience out here who's watching the show or seeing the thing, how many of you guys have actually been formally educated how to use the internet? Three, four? Five. Five. Right. So okay. five out of maybe 50 or 60 people sitting here. So that is the, and believe me, this is but the younger don't generation. But formal education. This particular audience yeah. all said that we are That's exactly conscious my point of the is. fact that we could be being monitored. So this is a younger, younger generation. They need but probably more, sorry, I'm not so, being condescending, so? but because they've been born into an internet world, they need more education possibly than the older so lot. Because you, need education. The, no, no, you, need, could, you may need education on things like, all right, let's, you know, let's use Tor browser and all that security, but let's first finish with the level one, That's which is point. just people doing foolish stuff. And by the way, 80% of the things that are going wrong are happening because of people just doing things that are dumb. They're putting out 
stuff which they shouldn't be. They, you know, uh, you, you, they, they, they have their passwords that are easy to read. The basics you have are a bank place, account basically. where your password is something which is obviously easy to use. Now, sometimes the banks and others step in to try and prevent that behavior. Sure. But people do it themselves. So, you know, generally the term that generally, you know, people like using is cyber hygiene. That, you know, the minimum basics that you would know, like... School is supposed to be that place where you go and learn the basics of life. Unfortunately, today, internet is banned or mobile phones are banned in schools and colleges. Now, of course, uh, Rajesh sir clearly said that the service providers are not storing the logs of the websites. In general, the people who will be watching this will take this for, okay, we are safe because our logs are not being stored. However, let me tell you the stakeholders in between when you type a Facebook.com or a Twitter.com and you press an enter. The moment you press an enter on your laptop, the first thing that happens, it gets recorded on your laptop itself. It goes and queries a local file, which is a host file. It gets the IP. If it doesn't find that, it goes to the DNS uh, server, which he, he, he mentioned. It gets the IP address of Facebook. Then it goes to Facebook. All this is happening via ISP and different routers, which definitely store the logs of the destination IP and the originating IP. Then on Facebook, again, your logs are stored. And then it comes back with whatever HTTP request you had. And again, you're seeing it on your mobile or your desktop. So there are so many different levels at which the things can be stored monitored and okay. used for different purposes and, and let yeah, me that, add, are required to be stored by the law under the ISP license so it's it's mm -hmm. not as though it's up to the ISPs alone so it's not as though they are maliciously trying to gather information about all that you're doing okay they're required and then you know, foolish I, behavior first see, no, no, I just want to take one step back and redefine what is foolish behavior I think we are underestimating what the internet is the internet is bigger. It is life itself. It is altering everything. It's not life it, no, itself. No, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. It will be. I mean, you can't, you for, can't for, survive for, on an island on the on the South Pacific well, without uh, the internet. You cannot. Most well, people. You actually, you cannot. You cannot run a business. Yeah, you cannot run a business unless you have a serv You ha uh, your Swatch Bharat says which whatever it is. You have to file online your service tax. One sec. I'll just come to that. What I'm saying is. We are still underestimating the internet, and this is yeah. a Buddha generation. I, I the internet, what you <laughs> and I... I strongly object you are gesturing to me to say our Buddha generation. <laughs> what? What? Can I ask for a Facebook poll and whether I should sue him for that? <laughs> what we call... Tweet me. Tell me if I should sue him. What we call foolish behavior is what my grandmother would call foolish behavior. Nachada pherdai partiya chhe. But ab ye nachada pherdai Facebook chhe. Nachada pherdai aur Facebook pe dalta hai. The thing is, that's fine. A, what is foolish is going to change. Okay. What is acceptable is going to change. Okay. Audience, let me come to you. Do you see a lot of examples of foolish behavior? And don't tell say that I did it, say my friend did it. <laughs> but what are the fool, most foolish thing you've seen on the internet so far? Posting of e-videos, Okay, <laughs> that's foolish is also big business. Okay, so you get 10 points from your mother for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, she's watching this. We're posting this on the internet. Posting a selfie with a dead body. Oh, yeah. That's rather foolish, yes. Yeah. Posting a picture with your dog. <laughs> What's wrong with that? No, uh, you are posting <laughs> an appropriate <laughs> pic. Like a <laughs> pic with your dog. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That comes back to his naked, back to the naked part, way, not the dog part. Way. I'm just saying I posted pictures in my dog and there's nothing wrong with it. Maintaining fake accounts. Uh, Why is that foolish? Because you are not pretending, you are not uh, showing your reality, you are not, you are pretending someone being someone else. Yeah, but if you are somebody you, with a fake account on Twitter, you may well be making <laughs> a lot of money. Complete that, Vikram. What I'm saying is, so it's going to alter everything. Okay. So the the reference points that we are using are real life, and then there's virtual life. Okay. Virtual life will make its so own actually, rules. So actually, can I just? I'll, I'll come back to the audience later again. But another quick snap poll. We are doing lots of them today. How many of you agree with Abhinandan? The internet now is life itself. Oh boy. Whoa. <laughs> See, Look I'm at still young at heart. Of hands uncle, out there. uncle, I'm still young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, or foolish. Or foolish. Can I, as can the I case just might be. But some people out here didn't think it was life itself. Why don't you think the internet is life itself? You are only responsible for your activities, and it is all upon you whether you want to decide you are addicted to it or not addicted to it. Yeah. Because in some. Uh, some so it's not just a question, Jenny. If you are sensible and yeah. sane, then you are not necessarily exactly. treating it as life itself. Yeah. See? 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 <laughs> That's wisdom for you, not foolish behavior. But can I just give a very basic example that goes beyond the privacy issue also? When I talked about education, I also think that people need to understand there are a lot of young people who think internet pay hai. 
तो इट मस्ट बी राइट ऑल राइट द फैक्ट इज यू गूगल समथिंग एंड यू कैन गेट टेन बिट्स ऑफ करेक्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड फिफ्टी फाइव बिट्स ऑफ रॉन्ग इन्फॉर्मेशन देर आर किड्स इन क्लास रूम हु आर सेंग बट इट वॉज ऑन विकीपीडिया ऑल्सो इट्स एंड बिकॉज आई टीच जर्नलिज्म आई फाइंड माई सेल्फ हैविंग टू इंक्रीजिंगली टेल माई स्टूडेंट्स दिस इफ um uh, somebody is putting footage of an event on their official page where you know that they're going to give you quality footage why are you just randomly going to youtube the thing is people do the easy things they'll google something they'll go to wikipedia they'll go to youtube they have to also be educated about the fact that just because it's out there doesn't mean it's correct